in the U.S., we've now had the uh, inflation data come out, and I always think it's good to start with looking at them all together because there's a lot of different metrics that we can use to measure inflation, and you'll see a lot of them thrown out. So this is, I think, a great kind of backdrop, and this is run by the Atlanta Fed, so you can just easily search for it, or I can, if you'd like, you know, it's probably better if I drop the... Um, uh, the link in the comments. So here you can see core CPI. We're at uh, we're at four percent in September 2021, looking at that 12 month growth rate. Uh, when you look at the target uh, based on two percent core PCE, you're continuing to see that 2009 through 2019, you know, we're two percent above it. When you look at just kind of where that set setup is. Now, the Cleveland median CPI is increasing. Now, the problem is it's starting to accelerate. And that's where, even though it still looks okay, you're getting some acceleration factors that are really picking up, which is being, which is being shown in the 16% trimmed mean CPI, which is now at 3.5% and running faster. Now, the other side, the reason why it's starting to run faster is the sticky side. So the Atlanta Fed sticky CPI is starting to pick back up, which is essentially just saying that there is a much broader based um, uh, driver for inflation. And what is increasing is becoming more and more permanent, which hint, hint is re rent. We've been saying from the beginning, rent was going to increase very quickly and it's going to happen in big blocks. And we just had our first big kind of mark to market, if you will, on that pricing, which is going to accelerate, putting that beat, that piece of core PCE, you know, continuing to move up. Dallas trim still remained flat while San Francisco accelerated as well as the cyclically sensitive inflation of that we've seen. So again, everything is over their target of 2%. You're seeing it more and more. And the reason why we're going above it and staying above it continues to increase over that time period. So this is just putting it in perspective when you look at that 16% trim mean consumer price. So when we go back to 1980, you can see that we haven't been here. So we were here back in 2008, 2009, uh, 2007, 2008. And then we haven't been here since 1991, 92. So, and then before that, we are above where we were in the 80s. So you're, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, you're right where we were in 83. So you're seeing just how rare it is to see this movement. And there's a lot of staying power where... It started to come down and we had a quick acceleration and there now there's a lot to stand behind that acceleration as some of these pieces continue to price in. Air, you can't blame airlines in this one anymore in terms of airfare, hotels, you know, cars are still expensive, but, it, uh, ho, uh, but cars were actually cheaper in this reading versus where they are now. So that's actually going to be another push to the upside. So you're seeing a lot of these movements that are just going to be that driving factor behind that inflationary push. And now when you look at the Cleveland Fed uh, cord CPI measures, yeah, there's trim mean, which is th that green one, median CPI, which again is that sharp acceleration, which is what we've been calling for because it was steady. And we were saying that there was going to be a big move up as core CPI pulls these things higher, which is going to continue to put pressure on the underlying consumer. But how so? So let's look at, at these at this summary, and we're going to talk more about wages and income in the next segment, but we'll uh, introduce it here because, again, there's a lot of uh, connection behind it. So when you look at real average earnings, uh, the, the last price is at negative 0.8. So when you look at, we're still not at pre-pandemic levels, and it's not because wages aren't going up, because they are, especially for the lowest common denominator, that lowest 20%, but it's not going up enough with inflation, plus you have the two top quartiles coming down, and now the third quartile, because remember there's four quartiles, all three top ones have turned down while we have seen the lowest turn up. So the three are those headwinds, the lowest is coming up, but net, net, there's still a negative growth. And that's on an hourly earnings and then a weekly average uh, earnings. It's the, at that negative 0.8 off the lows, but still seeing those headwinds as we did see CPI consumer uh, you know, uh, pricing beat estimates, it actually, it, you know, instead of coming down or staying flat, it actually started to increase. And we're starting to see those, the, this acceleration that we've been calling for. And just because, again, we look down the supply chain. So we're looking from where these goods start 
all the way through, and it was very clear that you were going to get these movements. The question will be, when does the consumer reject price increases? And you, and when you look at Michigan uh, confidence, when you look at consumer confidence numbers, they're already starting to balk at some of these prices. So then when you look at that, you know, just breaking it out, going back through 2007, you want to see where are we in relation. So in 2011, we were down here back in, in obviously 2007, 2008, as you had that acceleration in inflation. So there's a lot that it can, can be accounted, not just based on obviously wages, but the inflation side, which is why we always talk about them hand in hand, because even if you're making an extra dollar a week, uh, you know, but your costs are going up a dollar twenty. You're still losing, and that's where you see some of these pressure points that we continue to speak about. So then, when you look at the PPI side, so now let's look at where PPI is in general. So September PPI inflation came in at eight point six percent versus an estimate of eight point seven percent. Month over month came in at 05 percent. In general, then core PPI came in at 6.8% year over year, month over month was 6.2% versus the estimate of 7.1%, but it's still above the prior month. So you're still seeing the acceleration. It's just, you're starting to get a little bit of a slowdown, but there's also, there's such a delay at the ports that you're taking in product that was at a lower price than the new product behind it. So you still have this inflationary pressure. Now on the positive side, we have seen container rates come down. We've seen day rates come down, but that's that's a mixed bag because when we'll talk about this in segment five, PPI has gone up in Asia at well above estimates. So even though it's going to be cheaper to get it from point A to point B, the stuff on the boat is going to be more expensive. So it's going to it's it's not it's going to net out in a worse way and that just means that the PPI is going to remain elevated and continue to drift higher but as we said last month uh, you know and and as we said since the pace of it was going to slow so here's that pace continuing to be slow but we now expect that uh, the pace to accelerate as we go into November and December so then when you just look at, at just reiterating what we talked about in the uh, in segment one, inflation surprise continued to look uh, look much worse than economic surprise, which is the spread between city inflation surprise and economic surprise indexes has bounced off recent lows, but still deeply negative because inflation is continues to surprise to the upside while the economy continues to surprise to the downside. Then when you look at that uh, September CPI inflation, uh, it was a bit hotter coming in at 5.4% or 0.4% month over month versus the 5.3% estimate. Core CPI unchanged from prior month at 4% or up 0.2% month over month. So again, you're starting to see this, this stickiness and this is where you're getting a little bit of a pause because they're trying to manage what is being passed on to the consumer. And you did have some reopening uh, pricing come down. And as we've been saying, it was offset by some of the non-reopening things, which again is putting us in this sticking point and keeping us elevated as we go through the remainder of the year and well into, into 2021, uh, 2022. Now, the owner's equivalent rent portion of CPI continuing to move up now at 2.9%. And remember, when we showed this chart with, with where rents actually are, it's well over 6%. So <laughs> there's a lot of pressure pulling us higher as this continues to mark to market. And we keep seeing a lot of these, these movements, again, moving through the system and increasing prices. But as rents go up, as heating oil goes up, you know, as heating prices go up, heating costs go up, diesel prices go up, gasoline prices go up, this is, at, it continues to weigh on the consumer. And again, it doesn't happen all at once. It, it happens gradually and then it starts to accelerate. And then people are like, look, I, I just, I can't, I, I have to stop. And that's when you start to see that bigger acceleration to the downside on uh, consumer spending. And then annualized growth in CPI airfare has collapsed. To, so it's up 0.8% year over year in September, well off the peak of 24.6%. So you're seeing just how this has been taken out of the system. 
But it's important to look at this in two different ways. So this is looking at just inflation. Now we want to factor in where's wages, where's income, and build that out in the next segment in its own piece to really kind of dig into where we see that shaking out, not only as we go through Q4, but well into 2022.